Welcome to Living Life. May God fill you and guide you with His truth today. Yesterday, we saw that Abraham's journey with God just began. All through, although things you know, seem unclear, he has uh, relocated himself you know, with his family to the Promised Land. There was nothing to look forward to. The only things Abraham could hold up to were the seven promises from God. Number one, I will make you a great nation. Two, I will bless you. Three, I will make you your name great. Number four, you will be a blessing. Number five, I will bless those who bless you. Number six, I will curse those who curse you. Number seven, through you, all the families on the earth shall be blessed. In order to receive those seven blessings, Abraham had to let go of something he could hold up to. Number one, his country. Number two, his kindred. Number three, his father's house. Abraham had to let go of the certain things to receive uncertainty, which is a blessing from God. From earth to Canaanite, it will take 600 miles. Abraham faithfully followed what God asked him to do. However, we can see that Abraham is facing another hardship. Genesis chapter 12 verses 10 through 20. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife Sarai, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say you are my sister, so that I will be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. When Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that Sarai was a very beautiful woman. And when Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh, and she was taken into his palace. He treated Abram well for her sake, and Abram acquired sheep and cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants, and camels. But the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh and his household because of Abram's wife Sarai. So Pharaoh summoned Abram. What have you done to me? He said. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister, so that I took her to be my wife? Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. Then Pharaoh gave orders about Abram to his men, and they sent him on his way with his wife and everything he had. On the journey that God has called us on, some, sometimes unexpected hardships will arise and expose our weaknesses. If God called us to do something, doesn't God always lead us to green pastures? When we obey God's words, doesn't God need to bring on a word? As we shared earlier, Aram just made a huge step of faith. He had to let go of his uncertainties, his country, kindred, and his father's house so he could receive the seven uncertainties, future blessing. In order to obey the voice of God, he had to let go of those uncertainties to receive the uncertainties. Then he thinks that Abraham deserved the blessings. We think that he should live happily ever after. However, today's passage shows us that Abraham is facing unexpected hardships, which is a famine. Let's see how Abraham responded to his unexpected hardships in his faithful journey. When the famine strikes the land, Abraham flees from the Canaanite, the Promised Land, and has to Egypt in pursuit of a better and a favorable condition. There is a pattern you can find in Abraham's great faith journey in an earlier part of the Genesis chapter 12. The Bible keeps repeating these phrases, God had said, God had told, and God appeals to Abraham. God told him, Abraham faithfully responded to his word. It leads to Abraham's to reach to the promised land, although there were many challenges. 
However, in today's passage, you cannot find any signs that Abraham waited to receive the guidance or words from God. You can see Abraham decided to go to Egypt without God's guidance. There, his survival instinct made him to choose Egypt. His logic made him to leave the Promised Land. He chose Egypt over the Promised Land. Not only did Abraham's departure from the Promised Land, he chose to lie about his wife. His priority of self-preservation led him to lie to Pharaoh about his relationship with his wife Sarai. Abraham in introduced his wife as his sister to acquire the great favor from the Pharaoh. Abraham had to pay a huge price because of his lie. Although he received a great favor from the Pharaoh with the sheep, cattle, and servants, he almost lost his beautiful wife, who in the future will conceive the promised son Isaac. If God did not inflict Pharaoh and his household with a serious illness, Pharaoh would not have known. Abraham you know, would have lost his wife. After discovering the truth about Sarah, Pharaoh rebuked Abraham and expels him from the Egypt. His personal integrity got crushed in front of a pagan king. It is a humiliation lesson, but one of many lessons Abraham will learn from his future journey of faith. He learned two things. Number one, sometimes a famine can come, although he obeyed to the words of God. If God allows us to have a famine, God will take care of us in the famine. Faith comes by hearing rather than we relying on our own understanding. We should faithfully wait until God gives us the next step. Number two, God will sometimes allow us to bear the consequence of our failure, even if, in His grace, He calls some blessings to result of it. When we rely on our own ways, our plans and our strengths instead of trusting God, will make ourselves more vulnerable to sin. It will lead us down a dark path. Let us keep our eyes fixed on God's promises and not lean on our own understanding. God will faithfully help and guide us to fulfill His promises. However, we often fail to keep His words. On the journey of faith, we sometimes face our weakness and failure. Let us not be discouraged by this, but learn how to big and graceful our God is. Let's learn the lesson He has for us so that we can grow to be the people of God has called us to be. A few weeks ago, the Light Church had our own one-year anniversary. When we began our church, there was no support or any resources available. During the pandemic, we had to start with the two other members. All we had was a vision and a calling. In the beginning, we got a phone call from my friend, and he asked us to use his church building and asked us to teach their children and youth. I asked him to give us a time to pray about it. On the Tuesday, we decided to work together as a sister church. On the Tuesday night, I announced to our two members that we will have a first in a service in that church. But Wednesday, in the morning, we were surprised by the, another phone call from my friend, Pastor. He told me that our church building has been robbed. And according to him, all the you know, music equipment and the sound equipment had been stolen. Thief broke into the church and stole everything what we could use for the church. We began to laugh. Oh God, what happened now? <laughs> and we could have uh, been in our service and we could close down and we could run away. But instead, we decided to trust in the Lord and then move on. The book of you know, Genesis chapter, this chapter, really encourage us how we can fix our eyes on Jesus and move forward because we have God's promises. 
sometimes, you know, God is surprising us with the famine, and we experience that. But amazing thing is this: at the end of that, the neighbor in a church, they heard about the, our situation, and then they began to give us, you know, all the donations. They brought, you know, they their equipments. They brought, the, you know, their uh, instruments, and you know, it was, you know, began to be filled. And amazing thing is this: at the end of, you know. Uh, the week, you know, God fulfilled, and then God restored all the things, you know, what we lost. Sometimes within our life, we have, you know, hard time, but do not be afraid, because that challenge is in you know, existing to teach us how good and how great our God is, and then give your trust in the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for giving us another day. We are able to experience who you are and taste your goodness, Lord. And then, Father, sometimes when we are in the process of you know following after your guidance, we sometimes surprised by those famines. You know, Father Abraham, even though he fulfilled, he finally reached to the promised land. He did not expect that there will be the famine, but famine came. Abraham, you know, did not remember, you know, the God who brought him to the, you know, that promised land. That's why he chose, you know, how to deal with that famine with his own plan and understanding, but it led him to sin. So, Father, I just say, you know, pray that. In the midst of our faithful journey, sometimes we are surprised by the dose of famine. But in the times of a famine, in the times of a test, let us remember the promise. Let us remember the who gave that promises. So, Father, let us still and let us stick into the inner Father that promise. So we are able to fulfill the calling which you gave us, Lord, Father. Guide us, speak to us, Lord. We will give our ears and we will listen your next guidance, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.